This video is brought to you by Nebula. When Biden came to power in 2020, many Democrats hoped he'd be able to restore America's global image, which had collapsed under Trump. But while international opinion of the US did originally improve under Biden, in the past few months the prospect of a second Trump presidency, America's controversial support for Israel, and various foreign policy shortcomings have all conspired to reverse this trend. So in this video we're going to look at how America's global image has declined recently, specifically in Europe, the Middle East and Southeast Asia, and provide a tentative explanation for why this might be. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Let's start with Europe. Now, we've done a full video on this before, so go watch that if you want to know more. But the TLDR is that transatlantic relations have been under strain for a while now, for at least two reasons – China and Trump. Broadly speaking, most European states are unwilling to take as hawkish a line against China as Washington. This was made most glaringly apparent last year, when on his way back from a trip to Beijing, Macron warned that the great risk for Europe is that it gets caught up in crises that are not ours. In other words, warning other European states not to follow the US into a confrontation with China. Similarly, only a few days ago, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said there would be quote, no decoupling with China, apparently reverting to the pro-business attitude to China pursued by Germany under Angela Merkel. European countries are also irritated by America's newfound penchant for protectionism, exemplified by the Inflation Reduction Act which is framed in Washington as a defence against China's unfair trade practices, but risks accelerating Europe's deindustrialization. On top of this, the prospect of a second Trump presidency and the wider isolationist tilt within the Republican Party have pushed many European states to move away from the US, knowing that, as committed an Atlanticist as Biden might be, a Republican will eventually end up in the White House. But the most immediate point of tension between Europe and America is Israel. Some European states, including perhaps most notably Ireland, Spain, Norway and Belgium, have been vocal critics of Israel and expressed disappointment at America's unwillingness to do more to influence Israeli policy, by doing stuff like conditioning arms sales. But more generally, much of Europe worries that America's focus on Israel is distracting from Ukraine, and that the West's apparent double standards over the two conflicts risk undermining international support for Kyiv. Anyway, let's move on to the Middle East. Unsurprisingly, America's relations with most of the Middle East have been strained by what's happening in Gaza. Polling by an Iraqi think tank from late October, for instance, found that just 7% of respondents in Iraq, Syria, Jordan, Egypt, Lebanon and Palestine believe America is having a positive role in the region, and a similarly small number saying that they have trust in the US. At the same time, Arab attitudes towards America's adversaries have been improving, with roughly 35% of those polled expressing trust in Russia and China, and nearly 40% expressing trust in Iran. You might be tempted to dismiss this polling on the grounds that America has never really been popular in the Middle East, but negative opinion of America in the region has never previously fallen below about 20%. Now, it's worth noting that these numbers disguise a divide between Arab leadership and their publics. Many Arab leaders are still keen to maintain cordial relations with the US, both because of a mutual distrust of Iran and because American security guarantees are invaluable in the world's most volatile region. Nonetheless, even if they're not democracies, Arab governments are still very much responsive to public opinion, and the rise in anti-American sentiment will limit their diplomatic room for manoeuvre. America's relations with Israel have also been strained by the war in Gaza. Biden has become increasingly frustrated with how Israel is prosecuting its war, and Netanyahu's unwillingness to heed American advice, saying just last week that he believes that Netanyahu is making a mistake. Now, this obviously doesn't mean that Israel and the US aren't allies anymore, and American support for Israel has been remarkably steadfast since October the 7th. But it does look like Israel is becoming an increasingly partisan issue in American politics, with Republicans being significantly more pro-Israel than Democrats. This is, in part, down to Netanyahu, who has a history of leveraging partisan divisions. In 2015, for example, he gave a speech to Congress essentially lobbying Republicans against Obama's nuclear deal, and many analysts think that he's trying to hold on to power until November in the hope that Trump wins. 
But it's also just a reflection of public opinion in the US, as Democrat voters become increasingly sympathetic to the Palestinian cause. Finally, let's move on to Southeast Asia. We've left this one to last because, at first glance, it looks like US influence here is holding up pretty well. In the past few years, the US has signed a plethora of new security deals with countries who are also anxious about China's rising power in the region. Just last year, there was a new comprehensive strategic partnership with Vietnam, a new military deal with the Philippines allowed US troops access to four additional military bases in the archipelago, and a new deal with South Korea, allowing the US to deploy nuclear-armed subs in the country. Just last week, the US upgraded its military ties with Japan and announced a new trilateral deal with Japan and the Philippines. However, as in the Middle East, public sentiment towards America has soured recently. Polling from earlier this year by a Singaporean think tank found that, for the first time, a majority of people in the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, commonly known as ASEAN, would align with China over America if forced to choose. While the Philippines, Vietnam, Singapore, Myanmar and Cambodia are all more pro-American, whereas Thailand, Brunei, Laos, Indonesia and Malaysia are all increasingly pro-China. Similarly, 60% of respondents see China as the most influential economic power in the region, compared to just 14% who say the same about the US, and 44% see China as the most influential political power, compared to just 26% for America. It's also notable that three of the most pro-China countries, Brunei, Indonesia and Malaysia, are all Muslim majority, suggesting that America's support for Israel's war in Gaza is having an impact on its image as far abroad as Southeast Asia. All in all, a lot of America's diplomatic woes seem to stem from a lack of bipartisan consensus. Republicans and Democrats have always disagreed a bit on foreign policy, but the partisan divide has now become impossibly wide on a whole range of foreign policy questions, including NATO, Ukraine, Saudi Arabia and Israel. This has made America fundamentally unreliable as a strategic partner, forcing allies to constantly hedge against a change in administration, and also explains why American power is held up best in Southeast Asia, given the one thing Democrats and Republicans apparently agree on is the threat from China. That's not the end of this story either, so if you want to dive deeper into this and other stories, we have an exciting announcement. That's because it was revealed, in Variety no less, that we're building a new product with our partners at Nebula, called Nebula News. Let me explain this exciting announcement. In an increasingly polarised and confusing world, it's hard to find news that matters and that you can trust. So every day, the TLDR team curates a selection of videos that matter most in the world right now, handpicking a feed of content which should keep you up to date with everything you need. That means no more overwhelming feeds of news coverage, and instead just the stories that matter most. Videos produced by the brilliant creators on Nebula and curated by the TLDR team. It's truly the easiest way for you to keep on top of the news that matters to impress at your next wedding, dinner party, or whatever your life entails. It's not just curated news content brought to you directly by us. Nebula also features exclusive original content. That's things like Real Life Law's brand new series War Room, which every month runs you through a whole load of ongoing conflicts, keeping you in the loop. You can also watch every TLDR video on Nebula ad-free, and in many instances, before they land on YouTube. Now, if you're already subscribed to Nebula, you can find the brand new Nebula news section at nebula.tv forward slash news, and be sure to bookmark or save that link so you can use it as your TLDRified news homepage. If you're not a member already, then click the link in the description to sign up now. If you do, you'll get 40% off an annual plan by using our link. That's less than £2 a month. Plus, Nebula will know that you came from us, which really helps us out. Thanks for your support, especially when we're doing something so big and new. And we hope you love Nebula News.